We're talking today with Mary Kirby, who is the editor and founder of Runway Girl Network. Mary, nice to talk with you again. Nice to talk to you. And let's talk about cabin automation, something that's increasingly of interest to me. Yeah, what would you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to know, we've seen an, the impact of electronic flight bag, how impactful that has been on the flight deck. Yeah. Airlines, probably two-thirds of the airlines in the world today are in the process of deploying EFBs. The remainder are trying to figure out how to how to deploy. Yeah. So there's no question that there's that the impact of tablets particularly have had a huge positive impact on the deployment of EFBs, which previously when the installed ones, the, you know, the, the installed in the airplane is mm -hmm. very expensive. This is much cheaper. Sure. Now we're seeing a growing interest in deploying tablets in the cabin. What is your sense of how impactful this tablet technology will be in the cabin? Well, it's incredibly impactful if you combine uh, tablet with in-flight connectivity. So if you connect those tablets, it can be quite impactful. So for example, you have uh, you know, the ability to have real-time credit card transactions. That's something that is not really happening right now on a large scale. There are a couple carriers like Delta that is doing it, but by and large airlines are not transacting. So those point of sale devices um, are not transacting real time and the result is that airlines are losing quite a significant amount of money uh, because they're not uh, transacting in real time. And we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars collectively the airline industry is losing uh, because of this. So. That's a basic number one. Right. So one of the interesting statistics that I've come across is that in-flight sales, credit card, I don't want to use the word fraud, but let's say um, for whatever reason, the number is around 2%. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that that's a, a reasonable number? Yeah, I think that's a, a very reasonable number. And certain carriers obviously um, have uh, some larger offenders than others, um, especially those that uh, do a fair amount of business in duty-free. Um, there are even some carriers, though, because uh, they make so much money on their duty-free, particularly certain Asian operators, that uh, once somebody tries to transact at a certain amount, say four or five hundred dollars worth, um, they're heading up to the cockpit and uh, using cockpit comms to uh, to check those credit cards, which is outrageous if you think about it. Imagine using eight cards to check a credit card in 2013. It's madness. Clearly, the, the buy on board function then is really de really depends on the deployment of, of connectivity. It does, absolutely. And of course, for many, many years, there's been this discussion of, well, if you bring connectivity to your aircraft, you can then view your aircraft as a node on your network. But that, those conversations about the operational benefits of connectivity have been um, obscured by what it means for the passenger. Well, you can connect the passenger and you can do this and that and the passenger can check their email and get on Facebook and everything else. The ultimately, passenger connectivity, the business model for that, will be underpinned by the operational benefits. And real-time credit card transactions is just one, it's just the tip of the iceberg of what you're going to be able to do. Take it a step further now that you have real-time credit card transactions. Take it one step further, your aircraft is equipped, right? Now, imagine an immersive geo-entertainment solution on your in-flight entertainment. Imagine tying that geo-entertainment offering with your retail solution. And imagine allowing your passenger then uh, to not only learn about their route in a kind of a deep immersive way, but also to buy various different items along the way and to not only to, to make their reservations for their car rental or their you know restaurant on the other end, but also to tie the retail element in. You know, this is uh, Julie from Guatemala and I'm en route to Guatemala. How fantastic, slide that card. Or even if the IFE system doesn't accommodate real time, you know, have those transactions taking place, the information then goes right up to the flight attendant, she's come, she comes over to you and then does a real time credit card transaction on her iPad or other tablet. So imagine just how you can, what you can do from an airline retail standpoint. Moreover, think about the heavy trolleys that airlines are carrying around and taking up space in the aisles. Why not get rid of those? Have a, have a, have a really, really interesting duty-free retail uh, offering. 
but it doesn't need to be on board. You don't need to carry that all around with you. So if you, once you're connected, then you can start going down the path of now, how do we really monetize that connection? Okay, so the buy on board argument is, is like pretty self-evident then. Let's, let's talk about the other operational issues. I, I absolutely agree with you because it seems to me that if we were to depend on passenger take-up of Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and Internet, the model's never going to work. <laughs> An airline has to extract the value operationally itself and not depend on the passenger's credit card. Well, I mean, and this is, you know, this is what, uh, what I find so fascinating is that it, you know, airlines in the know know that. Um, the likes of, for exam uh, example, Norwegian. Norwegian Air Shuttle CEO um, admitted not so long ago that it's wonderful to be able to offer uh, you know, free in-flight Wi-Fi to passengers, but that really is secondary to the reason why they brought the Row 44 KU band connectivity system on board in the first place. Number one reason is operational benefits. Now, what do they what, what are we talking about beyond the cabin, beyond what you can do with connected tablets and credit cards and, and immersive geo-entertainment, which is, by the way, what Norwegian is going to be doing on the 787 ultimately, is the type of retail product that I'm talking about. That's ultimately going to be on their IFE. Um, but what can you do over and above that? Well, there's the obvious ones, as you mentioned earlier, the electronic flight bags. You connect those electronic flight bags, then you're giving real-time weather mapping to pilots information that they don't have right now. Why is that important? Well, number one, you've got passengers that are connected that have better information than many of the pilots in the cockpit. It's the one, some of the great irony right now of connected aircraft. Your passenger in 2A knows more than your pilot does. It's outrageous, right? So the operational benefits that you can glean from having that knowledge and making your way around weather systems, et cetera. Lufthansa has been doing it, as, as you and I both know. We saw a couple years ago uh, an incredible demonstration from Lufthansa, and now they're rolling it out in a more in a deeper way way. So you can do that obviously in the cockpit. Real-time uh, uh, real health monitoring. You know, it's the kind of a holy grail, right? It's been discussed for a long time. And yet, it's a holy grail for, for some very good reasons, right? Real-time uh, health monitoring, the likes of which Bombardier says it's going to bring to the C-Series. You know, being able to transmit data in real time to the ground so that they know when that aircraft, uh, you know, hits the gate, what that aircraft needs. The business aviation community is already exploiting connectivity in this way. Now, a lot of them don't talk, uh, you know, specifics, but they are starting to see, um, you know, in improvement in dispatch reliability, turnaround times. They're using connectivity in this way. If you've got a maintenance issue and you're able to have someone waiting at, for that aircraft um, with, the, with the part that they need, I mean, the turnaround time is amazing. And so they're, they're seeing it. They're using it right now. Okay, so let, let's, uh, connectivity I get. <laughs> let's talk about the flight attendant and the tablet in their hands. Yeah. There's a bunch of things that, 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 uh, that impact a flight attendant. For example, service recovery. Mm -hmm. For example, the documentation that they have to file. Right. For example, we mentioned buy on board. Yeah. There are all the different things that flight attendants benefit from, which is, this, this to me seems to be the new phase of deploying technology, and I think flight tents have been ignored in this in in this way in some in some sense. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think that if you can take you know the amount of hours that they're spending on this paperwork, the amount of hours that they're not being paid, right, to do this additional work, and if you can allow them to be doing this in flight over a connection, uh, and clear their slate rather than have to sit around for an extra hour at the end of the flight to complete this paperwork. Um, imagine what that means to the flight attendants and imagine what that means to their quality of life. And also imagine what it means to the entire airline operation. It just streamlines everything. Um, so it makes a tremendous amount of sense on so many levels. It's a tremendous from the standpoint of personalizing the passenger experience, which we haven't even talked about. What you can do when you have, you know, Joe, six pack in, <laughs> in 16A, you know, has had a difficult, uh, had had, has had a difficult time on the ground. He's communicated, for example, via Twitter to say, let's say a Delta assist. He's had a problem. He's communicated this. Delta then alerts the, the crew on board. Listen, can you go over and say, you know, hey, listen, we understand, you know, can we get you a drink? Can we, you can personalize the experience. The then, service you know, recovery. Service recovery in, in a way that, that hasn't been done before. 
The time is now. We don't have any more excuses. These connectivity systems now are being brought to aircraft. The, the interesting thing you mentioned about service recovery. So if, one, you know, if we think about what that's worth, I'm not quite sure what the percentage of, of um, service recovery issues they are, but it's got to be less than, let's say, 1%. But if you're looking at a, a flight like, let's say Delta, 5,800 flights a month, one point th staggering amounts of millions of people a year that they fly, even 1% or a half percent of that volume of people are service recovery targets. Yeah. And the question is, what is the service recovery worth? It's $100, is it $200? But if you look at that impact, and as you point out, connectivity drives this because the technology enables. It's, it's incredible what, what, what we should be getting out of this. It, I mean, it all adds up. And then you add that to you know, the money that uh, you're, you're saving from not having these fraudulent charges in flight, and it adds up very, very quickly. So um, there's, it's more, connectivity is definite, and tablets. Uh, work hand in hand. They work hand in hand and um, the airlines that are wise are the ones that are adopting them now. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome.